What's up, Cowboys Nation? Haley Sutton here in our fabulous Dallas Cowboys studio, and I'm so excited to be sat next to one of the literal best defenders to ever wear a Cowboys star on his helmet. We've got former Cowboys linebacker, Dat Win. Dat, thank you so much uh, for sitting down with us. I'm sure your life has changed so much <laughs> since suiting up in pads. Uh, so just tell us about that. How does it feel to finally be on the other side and, and adjusting to uh, life post-football? You know, it's been fun. It's been different, uh, obviously, but it's been a challenge too. I think a transition of leaving the game, if going through the process, if I think everybody that goes through it, doesn't matter how long you play, how short you play, it's just that you've been so routine and so scheduled for so long from eighth grade or seventh grade where you started all the way to high school, college, and professionally, it's, hey, your structure. And then when you leave, like, hey, what do I do now? <laughs> so, so that was, um, you know, I guess the first few months were a difficult part just to adapt and adjust and accept. Um, the differences of, of um, what you've been doing, something different. You, so it's been good. I, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of different things, but it's been fun. Uh, it's been challenging in, in a lot of ways where, hey, with, with the business that I'm in, uh, in the restaurant business and the, and the quick service business, I think that's um, it's a team, right, for me. And then uh, to keep a team and to build a team, and that's what's fun. So you got those football morals that you learned all, here. It carries over into the business side. It's all concept of football concepts. <laughs> it's all I know. So I share all this stuff. And and then, you know, we, we talk about office alignment. And we talk about, hey, the strength of a a a ex-player, you know, being like a a guy that can play multiple positions on a Sunday for you. So he's a he guys that can do, you know, punt return, kickoff return, play receiver, a running back, whatever it is. And then guess what? You're going to find that player on your team that can do all that stuff where, hey, they can take orders outside, they can they can jump in the kitchen, they have to, whatever it is. So you always try to find that X factor. What has been the biggest adjustment for you post football? Uh, the biggest adjustment, I think, um, you know, your wife, have, when you have family, you have kids, she has a routine, right? And you come home, you're like, hey, I'm back <laughs> home, I have all this time. I think that was the biggest adjustment. That's really, it was early on, uh, and then I adapt to it. Uh, but uh, that might be the biggest adjustment. And I think it's just that you, you don't get an opportunity to play under the lights, meaning that, hey, it's Sunday, it's game day, or you have a preparation leading up to where, like for my business and what I do is it's an everyday game. You serve people, you, you give them hot, hot fresh food, and, and you serve them but you don't get to coach and you don't get to teach. And you know what I mean? You coach as you run. You don't get to watch film and say, hey, this is what you gotta <laughs> do to fix this thing. But, but, uh, but that's been the, uh, the, 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 I guess, the, the challenging part. I wanna take you back to your playing days. Yeah. You were coming out of Texas A&M, a consensus All-American. You had awards left and right. How aware were you of the Dallas Cowboys defense? Because in the 90s, that was, they, they were, were it, right? Mm -hmm. So for you to be as prolific as a, of a college defender as you were, how aware were you of them? And, and how excited were you to potentially be drafted to play for the Cowboys? Well, the defense was known for small linebackers. They ran that little bit. Uh, you, I guess Dave Campbell came from the University of Miami. They have all a little bit smaller linebackers, more faster linebackers. So I was kind of aware. But really, we really enjoy playing Saturday at A&M or college. And then Sunday, you watch... The triplets, man, Troy, you know, Mike, and, and Emmett. And, uh, you know, what's crazy, I'm looking at the field right here, and that's like, I remember my first mini camp. I walked out, and, you know, our playbook at AM was about this thick, and the Cowboys was about that thick. You know, every situation, everything you think of. And, and the first day of seven on seven, a mini camp, um, halfway through seven on seven practice, um, I heard Coach Campbell go, Hey, Dad, get in there. And I was like, What? You get in there. I was like, well, I played a lot of football at AM. I know. So I go up there and you know my back is turned to the offense. I'm calling the defense, get the signal from Coach Campbell, and I break the huddle and I look over. It's Troy Aikman. <laughs> I look behind him, it's Emmett Smith. I look to my left, it's Mike. And they snapped the ball. I didn't even move. <laughs> I was so starstruck. And I was like, well, I'm on the same field with all these guys. So, but it was pretty awesome. You know, we had we had Prime, we had Woody, we had Coakley, we had you name it down the list, all those guys were great mentors for me in my early days, even Chad Hennings as well. Hey, you paid with a lot of really cool guys. Oh, <laughs> you know what? A lot of those guys, the majority of those guys were better people. 
than they were football players. I love That's that. That's so awesome. I love that. You get yeah. that a sense of that as well with the you know the rosters that I've been able to interact with. It just seems like the Cowboys always get it right in terms of personnel. Yes. Um, so we love that. You were drafted. You were starstruck, but you didn't let that keep you from making uh, an impact literally right away as a rookie. You kept getting better, but you faced a lot of adversity. Um, how were you able to kind of work through that to you know maintain and continue to be a prolific tackler, a prolific defender, uh, and kind of solidify your name in those Cowboys record books? Yeah, I think the game is um, at that level. The margin of error is so small. Even though I played at a big level, high level, high competition in, coll in the collegiate level, but in the pros, it's just like, man, everybody is so good. I can remember, I would tell people, those offensive linemen, the first two steps was as fast as you are. And, and, and you've got to find ways to find ways to learn about the game and, and put yourself in the best position to succeed. And I think that's the best part or the hardest part was to understand, hey, this is a professional level. It's football 24-7. You got to figure out, hey, what is your strength? What's your weakness? And how do you beat your opposition or the guy that you're competing with? And, and I think that's the mindset that I had was that every day was, hey, I got to win. Today, I got to win. I can compete. I want to I want a roster spot. And every year, I'm competing for a position and for a spot on the team. And, and that mentality really had helped me to have a chance to have played as long as I did. If I think if I didn't have that mindset or didn't go through that experience, uh, I wouldn't be able to play as the, the length that I played. And, and man, it's just, I had so many good mentors and people and players that you go through. And... And coaches, I think the coaches were a big part. You know, the Gary Gibbs, and George Edwards, and obviously Dave Campo, Zimmer. You know, I go, you go down the list of all those guys, and they all taught you something about the game. And and the mo most importantly, it was just the, what the Cowboys was like too. I remember the old Texas Stadium when we walked down the tunnel. You walk down, it's like a little steep walk, and then all of a sudden you get to the level of the field, and your eyes go straight up to Tom Landry. It's the Ring of Honor. Like man, these guys walk the same tunnel that I did. They were in the same uniform, put on the same helmet. I'm just representing those guys. Those were the, you know, the pioneers. Those were the guys that really were the guys that opened the door for us, for me. And, and I think I appreciate that time. And, and the one thing I regret about it, I wish I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. And then obviously one of my four core values now is uh, be where your feet is. I love you that know what I mean? And, and, and now I get to enjoy it a little bit more. But back then when you're competing your mind and you're always trying to, hey, you got to get the edge. And, and I think I lost a little bit that, or I didn't get to enjoy as much. But I'm just fortunate that I made a lot of good friendship and made a good lot of uh, people, you know, seen people I haven't seen in, in 50 mm -hmm. years in a, uh, here in the building. And, and I'm just thankful that, um, you know, the, 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 I crossed a lot of paths with some great people. Do you have a favorite memory that you can remember in your time playing with the Cowboys? Or maybe so a many. favorite, <laughs> maybe like a favorite game. Like, what was your your oh, statement God. game? I don't know. I don't know. If there was a statement game. I think um, we uh, did. You know, the, the obviously we didn't win a lot of games. Uh, we were five and eleven for a few years, and then Coach Parcells came in. I think those were the best. That few years I was with Coach Parcells, I think I learned more football in those four years I was with them than the fifteen years prior when I played. Wow. Uh, he made it so interesting. Uh, I guess the most exciting game was that game against the Giants. Um, we played the Giants on Monday Night Football, his first year with the Cowboys, and it's up in New York. Obviously, he's from New Jersey. He comes in the game, uh, pregame in the locker room. He's going to say, when you're 62 years old, I hope you feel the same way I do. Because, you know, he's excited, he's yeah. pumped up. And, and I always think about that, 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 that quote that he said, and, and we, we do the situation in, in training camp. So training camp's about to start. We're doing training camp, and we do, go about three, four times a, in training camp. And he said, if this thing, if you have the situation ever comes up in the game, we do about 25 of them, you better know it. If you don't know it, you're not going to play for me. And uh, we played the Giants, and we were up all game. Then all of a sudden, at the end, they came back and scored. They took a three-point lead. We didn't have no timeouts left. They kicked the ball. You might remember this. They kicked the ball, kicked off the ball, hit the pylon. And went out of bounds. I do remember this. The ball was on the 40-yard line, one play, and all of us were on the sideline. We had this one play that we practiced about three, four times in training camp. And it's a 62 Max Cafe XQ, and it's talking about the X. The, the X receiver runs a Q if it's a cover two, uh, so he runs the safety, he runs a Q, which is a 18 and seven. But if it's regular, he just run 18 seven, which is a, any kind of soft coverage. So we knew it was a decoy on the right side with the trips guy, the back side, Antonio. Bryant was the receiver and Quincy Carter was the quarterback. So he snapped the ball and us on the sideline looked at each other. It's like, it's all we knew was one play. And he threw the ball and Antonio caught it 
for a 25-yard gain. Now we kicked a 52-yard field goal. We tied it, went to overtime, <laughs> get the ball, go down, kick the field goal, won the game. And we're like, whoa. Like we, he's like, he's like God now, right? Like, <laughs> you know, we're like, Dude, we never experienced this ever before. And, and uh, it was so fascinating for me. I'm going to go sit all day talking about this stuff. <laughs> it, you know what? It is so impressive how much you guys are able to retain. I, I, I was literally just dumbfounded listening to you describe the plays and yeah. the routes. It's incredible what you guys are able to remember. So kudos to you, because yeah. I can barely remember like my morning routine. Um, let's talk about currently, uh, you've got a documentary coming out. Yeah. Uh, how special has it been just to recount all of these really special moments in your life for the rest of the world to see? Yeah, you know, it's, um... You know, we were approached through the process with the Cowboys and with many other films and stuff, and I it never felt right to do a film or a movie. And then all of a sudden, uh, A&M came with a documentary. I said, hey, it's going to be about 51, 55 minutes or something like that. And, and now it's a chance to share my story. And, and I think the most thing that's been great is that I had so many people that have impacted my life, so many hands and fingers in <laughs> in this whole deal that, hey, from a small town of Rockport, Texas, to go to Texas A&M and play for the Dallas Cowboys. My family migrated from Vietnam. So you come over America, play the America sport, now you play for the America's team, right? Like, it, it's just a story that's just unbelievable. And and for me, most importantly, it's the, the history. I think more than anything, it's the generation two, generation three, and the future generation knowing that, hey, you live in the world of opportunities. And there's a chance, and, and I overcame, I had a chance. And there's gonna be time, a part of the story that you're gonna see that, hey, I was the lowest, the lowest. But the, the whole documentary is really inspirational. I think that's one thing, the most important thing I want to get out and to give hope. And I think uh, another thing is that inspire other people to lead. And, and our country really needs that right now. And then for me, uh, to have a chance to share that. That's um, exciting for me and for family. And uh, it's more of a future generation that hopefully we can, we can impact so they can follow their dreams and have aspirations like I did. Is there a specific part that you're most looking forward to for people to see or maybe parts in there that are a little bit uncomfortable that you're nervous for people to no, see? No, I, I think uh, the one part that I wish just that goes back to be where your feet are, uh, be where your feet are, right? Or is that? I, um, there's, there's a transformation of a small town. So we came from America, we grew up, we moved to this middle town for the shrimping industry. That's what we did in Vietnam. So it was a business occupation. So we're doing this business and there was a lot of tension going on. And, and we obviously, mom and dad, mamas told me on my first day at school, I was five, five years old going to kindergarten. She goes, make sure you stay with your family, you stay with your friends. You know, those are only people that you know is your relatives. And, and um, so I just kid, we just go out there and we play, but but I remember there was a lot of tension. And uh, as we went on high school, junior year, we start winning. And as we, there's only 8,000 people in our hometown. So the whole town shuts down, and then everybody's at the football game. So you first start playing, and you realize sophomore year, freshman year, you play. You know, it's kind of different. Then all of a sudden, everyone's together. You see the, you see the whole, I guess, the transformation of that town because of the game. People coming together, it doesn't matter who you are, what color you are. Hey, we're, we're rooting for this team, we're rooting for the, for the community. So I think that transformation of that town really makes you feel like, hey, you were a big part of something that was very, was very special. I'm so excited for people to get an even better glimpse at your story than what they already have. Uh, as we wrap up here, this year's team here with the Cowboys going into 2023, a lot of expectations. There's a lot of chatter about if Dak Prescott can get it done, if this defense is really the real deal. Uh, what have you seen out of this roster and what do you kind of expect out of the Cowboys in 2023? Well, I think uh, every year is going to be a new year. I think um, obviously you got to have a quarterback. <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, what level you play and Dak Prescott's one of the better quarterback in this league. Yeah, we're going to have some up and downs years, but he's as good as it gets. And you watch him through his career when the games are down or you, there's no chance you play to the end. You see how many teams have come back and won for the Cowboys. And, and I think he's a great leader. He's a great player. And I saw him when he was at Mississippi State racking on our Aggies. <laughs> and, and, but um, I think with the team, the way it's it, uh, the defense, obviously, they had a great year last year. They, they can continue. They got better. And it, it, it goes back to the training camp, the chemistry. And I think uh, being around sports and seeing it for so many years, I think every year you just hope that it clicks right and it clicks at the right time. And I tell people, Thanksgiving, when Thanksgiving comes around, 
that's when you know the contenders or the pretenders. And, and, and when you get there, you get the opportunity. And in late November, if your team is really winning and you're healthy, you have a good chance. It's all, at the end of the day, you just want to be healthy and get into the dance because you never know how the ball bounces. And I tell people, I tell my boys now that play football with me, and I say, hey, look at this ball. It can bounce anyway. <laughs> you don't know it's going to bounce. It's not a basketball. It's gonna be, when you drop the basketball down, you know it's coming right back up. This football, it's just different. But that's what's so fun about this game. So I, I love the game, and I think the game has really taught me so much in my life, and it's been so big a part of my life. But, um, you know, you just go in, and you just hope for an opportunity. And I think that's all you hope for, to stay healthy and, and to go out there and compete. We know they can compete. They're going to be in for all the games. Uh, obviously, Philadelphia is going to be the team to beat, and I, I think we have enough weapons here to, to compete and, and to win. But uh, overall, like I said, the number one mo most important thing is just the, the injuries and, and to stay healthy. Last question I want to ask you because you mentioned it earlier. Um, obviously, the Cowboys drafted Deuce Vaughn this year, and the big stigma around Deuce is that he's too small. Oh, yeah. As someone who has heard that message their entire <laughs> career, what advice do you have to Deuce Vaughn or really any players who are having you know, so people that, tell them they can't do this? Well, you, you, you make it to – there's a reason why you're here. And, and I think that's going to be – everybody path is differently. And, and I think guys like myself – you know, Zach Thomas is a good friend. He's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame with their, Marcus Ware in a few weeks and we'll be there. But he was an undersized. And, and he always told me, go, hey, this is what you, they, they can't measure this. They can't measure your heart. And I can tell you, with all the players I played against, the hardest guy to defend are those little running backs that <laughs> they can catch them on the backfield. Man, I used to hate that because they go, I'm going to isolate you. And they're like, you're one on one. And you're like, oh my, that's. Yeah, but, but that's, that's a nightmare for all linebackers and majority of the safeties in the National Football League to line up and have to cover Deuce. <laughs> I'm sure he will love to hear yeah. that. Datwin, thank you so much for your time. We're so excited to see your story come out and uh, continue to watch you sign on the food industry side as well. Thank you very much, Haley. Thank you.